The next topic I want to cover is to demonstrate the impact that different types of splitterators, and more importantly, different types of splitterators for different types of collections with different characteristics, have on performance of your system. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to take a look at an example called the EX14 example. Not the most intuitive name, of course, but it helps to make things fit on slides. We're going to take a look at the EX14 folder, and that is actually a nice little micro benchmark that allows us to compare in an apples to apples way the impact of different Java collections and their implementations on the performance of different splitterators. And as you might have surmised from the earlier discussion in the previous lesson about array list versus linked list, we're going to use array list and linked list in order to compare and contrast performance. So as it turns out, I, as I mentioned earlier, but now we're going to see proof, uh, the array list and linked list collections in Java partition data quite differently. And that difference, of course, will impact the performance. So as you can see here, that the tri-split method for array list will split things evenly and efficiently. And the reason it's even and efficient is it's very trivial and very fast to compute the midpoint for the for the uh, array the array list. And it doesn't do any data copying. All it does is just split it in half and then it essentially just has a reference to the underlying array. So there's no copying required. In contrast, the tri-split method for linked list doesn't split evenly and it doesn't split efficiently. And the reason it doesn't split, ef split efficiently is it has to copy a bunch of data. So that's going to be an extra overhead that is not incurred by the array list implementation. So that obviously leads to the question, does it matter? And the answer is, well, it depends. And the reason it depends is it depends on the amount of input you've got that you're trying to split. If you have a small amount of input, not a big deal. If you have a large amount of input, it becomes a bigger deal. And in order to demonstrate this, I have a little test program. And there's a method here called time parallel stream uppercase. And what it's going to do is, is actually carry out these computations. So we're going to give it a list of words. And the test driver is very cleverly set up to be able to give the list of words as either an array list or a linked list. And the list of words will be a list of all the works, all the words, rather, in the complete works of Shakespeare which, as you'll see, is rather vast in the number of words it's got. The actual business logic of this thing is going to run kind of a micro benchmark loop where it will use a splitterator to take the input, be it in linked list form or array list form, and it'll split it up. And then in parallel, it'll uppercase the words in the word lists using a parallel splitterator. So, the results that you can see here, which I'll, I'll show you in more detail when we run the code in a minute, these demonstrate that the splitterator differences between array list and linked list become more significant as the input size grows. So the way I did this is I, I have four runs of the test. And for the first test, I only look at 1,000 words, the first 1,000 words in Shakespeare by some definition of first. And you can see that the performance for the array list version and the linked list version, roughly the same, 17 to 19 milliseconds, really indistinguishable. Then we go ahead and kick up the number of words a bit. Now we have 10,000 words. And in this case, that's still about the same. The array list is infinitesimally faster, but it doesn't really matter. 88 milliseconds versus 90 milliseconds, who cares? It's the same. Then we go with 100,000 words. And now you can start to see that the array list implementation is pulling ahead. So it's now about 600 milliseconds, and the linked list is around 700 milliseconds. And then the final test run we do here is for all the words in the works of Shakespeare. And you probably never knew this, but there are 883,311 words in Shakespeare. And uh, what we're doing here is seeing the difference between array list and linked list. And now when we have you know, the full Monty, if you will, of words in Shakespeare, now array list is way faster than linked list because the input's gotten substantially bigger. And, and we'll talk more about this later when we talk about when to use parallel streams and when not to use parallel streams. Clearly, when you have large amounts of data and collections or data sources that don't split evenly and efficiently, parallel streams is less of a win. 
So what we're going to do at this point is I'm going to go switch over and show you the actual code and we'll take a look at the code and we'll talk about the code implementation so you can kind of get a better sense of how it works under the hood. So here's the source code we're looking at for our program to demonstrate the difference between linked list and array list with respect to split rate or performance. And we're going to measure the difference in overhead between combining and collecting results in a parallel stream versus a sequential stream using various types of collectors. Right now, we're not going to talk about the, the collectors. We're just going to talk about the splitterator parts and the splitterator performance. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code. You can see here that we've got the X14 class. It has a certain number of iterations we're going to be running. It's got the file name to the complete works of Shakespeare, which we've seen before and other stuff. And now we're going to go ahead and and run the code. You can see it's going to tell us how many processors are available that are known by the underlying virtual machine. This is an eight core machine. So it uh, should be something like 16 processors because they're hyper threaded. We'll see if that happens when I run the code. First thing we do is we go ahead and we warm up the fork join pool. And then we go ahead and run the splitterator test. That's all we're going to care about for this particular run. When we talk later about some of the other things we'll talk about like collectors and so on and joining, we'll take a look at other tests. So run splitterator tests is really the thing we care about. Here's the run splitterator test method. You can see it does some pretty clever stuff. We're going to create an array that's going to have three values, 10,000, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, and up to a million. Because as we saw before, there's 883,000 words in Shakespeare. So a million will cover that. And then what we do is for each of the elements in this array, which we call limit, we're going to go ahead and open up the complete works of Shakespeare, and we're going to split the complete works of Shakespeare up into essentially a list of words, and we're going to pass limit in here. So we're going to start out with the first 1,000 words, then the first 10,000 words, and the first 100,000 words, then up to a million words. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and get this back as a list, an array list first, we call that array words. And then we're going to convert the array list into a linked list. So we take array words, we wrap a linked list around it. So we pass the array in as a parameter to the linked list constructor, and that will make a linked list of the words. So now we've got an array list of the words and a linked list of the words. And then what we're going to do down here is we're going to call the time parallel stream uppercase method twice, the first time passing in the array words here, and the second time passing in the linked words. And just to make it easy to tell what we're doing, we pass in array list as a string, and then down here we pass linked list as a string, and when we're all done, we go ahead and print the results. So let's go ahead and go down here. Here's our time parallel stream uppercase method, which takes in the test name and a list, which is either a linked list or an array list. By the way, this kind of underscores why it's so important to, to always use the more generic type as the type that you pass or use as a field. So in this case, we have a list of character sequences, which could either be an array list or a linked list. So we don't hard code ourselves into one or the other. We leave it more generic. We then go ahead and print out. We, we start by running the garbage collector so that everything gets a pristine memory pool to begin with. So it'll give the same performance and allow us to do apples to apples comparisons, hopefully. We then indicate whether we're doing this sequentially or in parallel. And in this case, we're doing it in parallel. And then we go ahead and time the following computation. So if you recall, run timer dot time run is a clever little way of being able to record the time is, that is taken to do all the computations we're passing in here as essentially a supplier lambda. And what we do is we're going to make ourselves a new empty list where the results are going to be stored. And then we go from i equals 0, i less than to max iterations, which is 10. So we can get some, some heft to the micro benchmark. And then we're going to add the results to this list. And we're going to compute the results by converting the words parameter, which is either a linked list or an array list, into a parallel stream. And then we're going to go ahead and uppercase each word by using two string and two uppercase. And then we're going to collect the stream into a list and store that at the end of the linked list. 
So that's what we're going to do to run the, the computation. So let's see if we can get this thing to run. So now it's up and running. And you can see here that uh, for a thousand words, essentially identical performance. It's four milliseconds, no real difference between a linked list and array list. For 10,000 words, array list is pulling ahead. For 100,000 words, array list is pulling further ahead. And then when we get up to the, uh, the full list of words in, in Shakespeare, array list is substantially faster because it's able to do the splitting much more efficiently. And you can also see, as I mentioned before, that my virtual machine that's running here on my eight core hyper-threaded MacBook Pro thinks that there's actually 16 cores available. There's really only eight physical cores, but 16 logical cores because the hyper-threaded cores counted as two cores, even though it's not quite the same as having 16 real cores. But you can see quite dramatically here that the results demonstrate that using an array list is much faster because it does faster splitting. So that's essentially the end of the example to demonstrate performance of splitterators. Hopefully you now have a better sense that the type of collection that you've got, type of data source can have a big impact on performance because collections that split evenly and efficiently will typically work better and scale better when used with parallel streams than ones that don't.